What's the matter, Kate? Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I'm just thinking, so the mothers enrolled in 91 and 92. Yes. And then they were re talked to in 2015 and 16? They, they collected the data again in 2015 and 2016. This oh, happens right. very often where data is gone back and looked at a different way. The same data or different data? The, these, kid, these ladies from the 91, 92 year okay. got pulled. This is, the, this is the data that's being analyzed in this, in this report, is okay. that original data. Okay. Do you remember in 243, I don't know if I used this data set with you all, uh, breastfeeding raises your IQ. Did you, was that your guys' class, Jack? That was your mm -hmm. class? Occasionally, I cycle that one through, and what they did was they took they took um, data of in the 1980s and then tracked forward 30 years and checked the kids' IQs 30 years later. So I believe it's that kind of longitudinal study they're talking about, where you've got time that passes in between. Because if you think about it, they have to first find out if they were using aspirin during pregnancy, and then they have to figure out later if it's linked to the behavioral problems with the same women. Does that make sense? I mean, because you can't test the baby for behavioral problems. You have to test them in school, if that makes sense. So you have to wait until like 10 years down the road or something. I just feel very skeptical. But you should. <laughs> you, you should. We haven't gotten the numbers yet. Because I'm thinking of like 91 and 92, because I was born in 91. So I don't know. It just seems like by 25, you know, by the time 24, 25 rolls around. I don't know. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Maybe the timeline's questionable, but that's the reason it's separated. Yeah. It's, First, we have to assess yeah. whether or not they took the they, they took acetaminophen while they were pregnant, mm -hmm. and then see if there's an association later on with the behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. I see you're questioning the time frame, which is probably maybe too long in your opinion. It's totally fine, but that's what's going on here. Now, this is well, this is actually a, a comment. I put the link down there for you, which is a comment on the study itself. This gets buried in that paper. So 46% greater risk of, Taylor, you mentioned this. What does that even mean? Is that what you said? 46% greater, a 31% greater risk, a 23% greater risk. So here's an example of misusing percentages, potentially. I'm not saying these are. I'm just saying that we have to look at the data and get these numbers back here. And some of the numbers we need are these right here. Among the seven-year-olds who undertook a seat of benefit during the second third. 6.3% had overall behavior, while 4.3% of those whose mothers didn't use had such problems. So there's 4.3 versus 6.3. So keep that in your mind, right? 4.3 versus 6.3. If you actually divide those, that's where their 46% is coming from. We're about to, we'll about to see that in a, in a second in our, in our actual spreadsheet, just so you know. But realize when they just simply tell you a 46% increase, they're hiding the actual numbers they use to get that 46% increase from you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the importance. So when, when you said, Taylor, what does a 46% increase mean? Well, here's where they're actually getting it from. So if you would, if you would, I went ahead and I combined all this into this little chart here that we're going to fill in right now. So we got the folks that used acetaminophen and that didn't use the acetaminophen. I went ahead and read very carefully the report that's linked in the, in the paper. Remember the number 7796? I remember that one. That was actually mentioned in the LA Times article. What they didn't mention was the control group number, which is 6916. It's in the paper. The link's in there if you want to go grab it. I want to know the vote. You were about to. Hey. So <laughs> down over there. About, this is where we're getting to. We're actually getting to the margins now. You got it, girl. Hold you. Hold you. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let's fill this chart in. Let's fill this, let's fill this chart in, okay? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go. Let's bring this down so we can get right on the board. Okay, so how many of the 7796 had behavioral problems? Six point. Of the, we have to use the 6.3%, correct? That's, remember, very rarely are they going to just hand you the data like they should. You have to go find the data. That's where 6.3% came from. So we have to take 6.3% of 7796. That is what's going to go right here. Fair enough? Yes. What's going to go right here? 4.3% of 6916. It's going to go right there. Let's figure those out first, shall we? Yes. Oh, I'm salivating. Not really, it's kind of disgusting, but yeah. 
You, you, you're, you're all answering, you're asking the right questions. Like, I want to see a margin of error. I do too. But in order to see a margin of error, I need a sample size. And because I have two distinct groups, I need both sample sizes. And this, think about how much work I had to do to get all this stuff. I had to check three different resources. Why is it so hard to find this stuff? They don't want you to know. They don't want you to find this stuff. They'd rather just throw the 46% out there and, and claim that that's, that's what it is. All right, I got point. The first number. Point, oh, you got the first number? Yeah. Hit, hit it. I got 491.148. 491 point, say that again. 491.14. Let's call that 491, round off the nearest whole kid, I think. Uh -huh. Out of the 7796, which is whatever's left. So that's going to be a 5. Zero, three, seven, three, oh, five, I think, within the math right. That's what they add to 7796. Okay, so far, I just put that, this, we, we don't actually need the, the, the no behavioral problems. All we need is the ones that did have behavioral, because that's the percentage we're looking at, is the percentage of behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. But I like having them side by side so you can see how many didn't have the problems. Yes, this, this many didn't, this many did. Okay, you got the second one too, Katie? Yeah, 297. Yep. Two. Nine, seven, so if I can subtract into one, that becomes zero to nine, that becomes a six. Six, six, nine, nine, I think. Six, six, one, nine. Shit. <laughs> one. Thankfully, we don't need that number to do the calculations, because I've got Excel program to do that better than I can. This is the chart of the data they collected. This many had behavioral problems, this many none in both groups. They used the acetaminophen versus didn't use the acetaminophen group. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Paul, ask me that question. Ask me that question, man. I'm just trying to look for at the board. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. It's, it's, I had to shrink it down to make it on one. You're all good. Okay. I forgot my glasses. I'm sorry. I know what concerns me about the study. No, can you hold, can you hold up just for a second, Katie? No, no, I want to hear concerns. I want to hear lots of concerns about this. Here's, I'm going to give you, I'm going to drop some on your lap right now. Okay. Not literally, because that would be <laughs> Whenever you have count Data. This is counted data, not measured, right? LSAT was a measured. You took a test, got a score, it was measured in some way. Count data opens itself up to be a little more squirrely and wishy-washy. Does it not? Now, I'm going to come back to that because this is one of my concerns. I think it's the same one. Denali, please. I don't know if it's just because it's not mentioned in the study, but wouldn't that mean that they have to study about Yes. 7796. Yeah. They're only referring to one of the two samples, the experimental group. They're not referring to the control. That's why I had to go find the paper. Because I was like, how did they break the 7796 out? Because honestly, if they tested 7796 that were using acetaminophen, how would you possibly know it's bigger unless you had a second group? That's what started me down the path in August this, this year of finding that control group. Because in order for you to make me, in order for me to believe that you found an increase of a risk, you must have been comparing it to something. And that something probably isn't like a known value. Like in 243, we did things like flip coins. And we can compare flipping coins to 0.5 because we know that a coin flip is 50%. You know what I don't know? What's the percentage of kids who misbehave in school in, in the general population? I have no idea what that number is. So I have to form two groups that set a baseline and then compare from baseline. Does that make sense, my friend? Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully that makes sense. OK, here we go. You ready? We got the numbers we need now. I'm going to pull this down. Back to the Excel calculator. Now, we've spent quite a bit of time in the two independent means confidence interval. This is not an average. We're using proportions, are they not? They're percentages. So we're going to hightail it over to two independent proportions confidence interval. Oh, look at that. I've actually got the numbers in there for when I, when I set them up. Are they the right numbers? 491, 297, they are. I did it earlier. So I, they're actually sitting in there from before. I apologize. I must have used this to test the calculator to make sure it was working. <laughs> Yay, done. Let's interpret. Let's interpret. Pete, say that again. The mo's not very big. Why is the mo not very big? It's really huge. You've got 15,000 in your two combined samples. That's a 